Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 89. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 10, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, we're in chapter 10 here. We're going to talk about returns to start off this chapter, and then we're going to talk about capital market history. Uh, so we're just going to start off with something we actually already saw. We want to talk about period returns for stocks. Now, mostly we're going to be talking about when we say period, a single year. They're also It's also called holding returns. This is important to know how to do because then we can look at past data, figure out the period returns for each year, and then get some sort of average for a particular stock and use that to predict, help predict the future. All right, so we have an XMO stock from 2006 at the start. It was 55.10. At the end, back in the go-go 2006, the stock went up nearly $25. Um, dividend paid during the uh, year was $1.28. So we've already seen how to calculate the dividend yield, the capital gain yield, and the total return. But in this chapter, we want to take um, notice that if we're looking at lots of past years, now in this example, we're just looking at one, 2006. But let's say we were looking from uh, 1995 to 2010. We wanted to look at all of the past data, average it, and then use that as an estimate for guessing what the future might hold. Well, the, the key is you don't want to forget the dividends. You don't want to just look at stock at the beginning of the year and the end of the year. You got to look at all the cash flows. For a, so for a stock, uh, we got to look at that dividend. No problem. Dividend yield, we simply compare the amount of dividend paid at the end compared to what we paid at the beginning of the year. Or if you're looking at lots of historic um, data, it's not so much that we bought it at this particular time, but for the year, we have to look on the, the January 1st, what was the stock? We compare the dividend to that, and boom. Capital gains, we know that we can go always whatever the percentage change is. It's end divided by begin minus 1. So we take the end divided by begin minus 1. We saw the mathematical um, reasoning for this uh, earlier in this class. Now, simply put the capital gain at the end of the year and the dividend yield. When we add those together, that'll give us the total return. Now. Um, Think about this. What if you didn't buy this here and you didn't sell it here? Is this still, whoops, there's the old classic. I got to do that again. That was the old classic uh, sum function error. I'm going to Alt equals to get my auto sum. And it tries to be polite, right? So I need to point to the edge and drag it down and just add those two. All right, so 41, That that's number formatting, I'm going to apply general. There's also, and so you click. There's also a keyboard shortcut for general, control, plus shift, plus tilde. If you're doing lots of formulas all the time, and you, you always have uh, your formula, in essence, what it did is it looked up here, and it took the, the uh, number formatting and applied it here. So control, shift, tilde will always get you back. Now, uh, back to this point. Even if you're not buying and selling at this particular time, it's very important to know this technique because then you can estimate the return for a particular year. And again, this is just one year. Uh, later in this chapter, we'll do it for multiple years and then figure out what the average over a long period of time is. We could also do it this way. Forget uh, doing it in three steps like this. If you're just doing it for a single year, you'd say, oh yeah, the end price plus the dividends. That's all the cash at the end. That's the end divided by our begin minus 1. Again, we got 41 cents, so I'm going to control shift tilde. All right, um, Briggs and Stratton at the beginning of 2006, Briggs and Stratton at the end, and they paid an 88 cents dividend. I'm just going to skip to the uh, end here, I'm going to say, oh yeah, the end plus the dividend paid. And then I'm going to divide it by the begin minus 1. Control Shift tilde. It, technically, what's happening there 
is when you make a formula based on cell references, it <coughs> sucks the formatting from there, these cell references, and applies it to the cell. And every time you, you, you hit Enter, it does that. So Control Shift tilde is very handy. So in this one, our period or holding return, our one year return, is minus 28. This one was uh, 0.41. This looks more like the returns. Uh, I'm shooting this in the year 2010. So uh, 2008 to 2010, there's been some pretty bad returns. All right, we have, we're going to look at a bunch more period returns for different types of bonds, preferred stocks, so in the next couple of videos. So see you next video.